be seated. <laughs> Welcome. Hello, guys and girls. Hi. Is everybody all right? Yes. Good. This weather's not putting you off. <laughs> oh, you, you, any locals, I would imagine, take it for normal. Mm -hmm. You've had summer, now you've got winter. <laughs> I feel sorry for you. <laughs> Living in Texas, as I do, um, I, we get very little. We, uh, we live very little winter. It's kind of late summer, early spring. And about maybe a couple of months or a month where, depends on which way the wind's blowing. You know, you either get it from California or you get it from the Arctic. We are middle of, middle of the nice big country, so we don't get that much stuff. Around. So, anyway, would you sorry. like some questions, please? Yeah. Hey, any questions? We'll start with this side of the audience. Nova, just uh, questions on this side of the audience. If you have a question, just raise their hand. Anybody got a question? Right. Right, right back there. Right back there in the hat. I was going to say, I better go back to my table. Looks <laughs> <laughs> like I've got more in here than I had out there. Um, <laughs> Oh, turn right Hi, uh, my name is Mike, and I uh, just wanted to ask you if you had ever heard uh, the uh, Star Trek novel or Star Wars novels that are now, uh, well, they never were canon to begin with, but they've basically been thrown out the window. But I was wondering what your feelings were on Chewbacca's death. Uh, Not the movie. No. <laughs> Never will be in the movies, but uh, um, it came as a bit of a shock because you know you do things and then suddenly you realise, okay, what are they going to do next? Yeah. So you 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 carry on doing what you're normally doing, and suddenly you get a report or a phone call from the family saying, oh, Pete Mayhew's dead. <laughs> <laughs> I think I speak for everybody. We're glad you're back. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, that, 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 that story is, we were in Germany, came back to England where I was living at the time, and phone, phone went, are you all right? Yeah, it was a family over in the States. Uh, we heard a report on the news, on the news radio. Um, the tree, all the people made who was dead. I said, no, I'm still here. Uh, <laughs> what it was, someone had leaked the book um, that Chewie had, um, that he picked up that Peter Mayhew was dead, Chewie. Yeah, the Jimmy was dead rather, and it went worldwide. <laughs> so you can imagine having to go around and tell all my friends I'm still around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, made it, it made it such an interesting situation for a little while. And when I did make the offer, um, I said, you know, why did you, why did you pick on Chewie? He said, well, someone had to do it. <laughs> so I got, I got, I got, I got lumbered with the uh, situation. But, sorry mate, and he's, he's written in one of the books that he gave me. He said, sorry mate, someone had to do it. So that's the, yeah, that was the situation on that one. And a question over here. Hi, I'm Gage. Did Han Solo boss you around so much he felt like your enemy? <laughs> Any more? Uh, um, yeah, right here. Actually, you can just shout it out from here. 
you had some really powerful scenes. I just wonder maybe what was your favorite Chewbacca moment? Her favorite Chewbacca, your favorite Chewbacca moment? Uh, favorite, favorite Chewbacca moment? Probably one that I shouldn't uh, really uh, think is horrendous. But it was trying to put 3PO back together a bit. <laughs> <laughs> when you've got bits and pieces of, th of, of uh, C3PO on, on the table, you pick up the head, pick up the body, pick up the head, you're trying to get the head into the slot. It's like a turn socket. In, as the head goes into the body. I'm here, his head's there. Camera, the camera is where you are, right in the middle. So my every action is magnified about 20 times. <laughs> we can even see, it's that bad, you can even see the sweat coming off my fingers. That's why I had to change the uh, finger situation. Normally, in the early days, we used uh, um, we used nail polish and hand banker. Then they decided because they could see everything, you know, literally dripping off. And then we borrowed a pair of a certain gentleman's. Uh, it's a costume, maybe Darth Vader's gloves, <laughs> put them on, put the costume back on, it looks like an end, it looks like a, either a monkey's hands or anything like that, so it solved the problem, and that was one, yeah, one of the major ones, and also trying to, trying to pick, there's a scene, um, when 3PO gets pulled out on Empire, um, and that Chewie's down in the, in the incinerator room looking for uh, parts of 3PO, and you've got all the, uh, the uh, little people down there <coughs> trying to fight them off. There's about a dozen of them, so they come with me, unfortunately, back quickly. So um, those are two that of many that were around. And another question for you, young man. How do you make the Chewbacca noises? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> actually, I don't. I do some, but a lot of them are bears and dogs noises that are superimposed on what we've done actually on set because when you're on set it's noisy and you wear the mask you cannot get it through it's got to be pretty loud to get through to for the others to rec to recognize what you're actually saying so it's all worked out beforehand you make noises according to the script and then they'll take in the clever machine and they'll take it take my piece of dialogue out and put the dialogue in that they want to. Okay? Question over here. No? Uh, right there. It's right in front of you, Nova. Right there. That was easy. Uh, thank you for coming out and uh, we appreciate all the work you've done. Uh, what was the process for auditioning and being cast like for you? Um, interesting because First off, we did, um, first movie I ever did was Symbiot and the Eye of the Tiger. The very happy Harry Housen and stuff, <coughs> way back. You know, 1975, 76. And did that, thought, hmm, in good, good, uh, good experience, easy to do, or relatively easy to do. And the guy that was making the suit, the Minotaur suit, was also involved in Star Wars parts of the costumes for all the other all the other 
weird and wonderful dream to serve with AI. Uh, my name got passed to him. He phoned me up and said, how about coming up to audition in the studios? Uh, went up there, sat, walked into George Lucas' office, sat down, looked around, and on one wall, there was all the, uh, all the, uh, layouts of all the characters. Middle, you had the major characters, Vader, one end, Chewie, the other end. Looked at Vader and went, hmm, six or eight, no, that's too small. Uh, so, walked along, or looked along, and there he is, the walking carpet. <laughs> <laughs> eight foot plus, or as tall as possible, a blue, a blue eyes. Okay, fine. Walked, sat down, door opens, George comes in, George and Gary come in and um, I did the one thing I normally would do is stood up. George being short. <laughs> he goes, mm. you know, I think we found him. <laughs> Basically, that was the interview. <laughs> next, because I knew I got the part, because next day uh, we went down to the costume years, got the costume made, went back to the studio, got the mask made, and within two weeks, Chewie was on set, working, doing Dirty Bay 94 of the hand and Jella. So that shows how quickly, if, if they find the right ones, that shows how quickly you can do it. So we were happy, I was happy, I was working again. Yeah, it was just a nice, it was just a nice feeling talking to other actors. Mm. You're on Star Wars, yeah. Me. <laughs> 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 did this thing about ten minutes breakfast time to work in work in the set. Yeah, so it was fu it was fine and everything everything seemed to work out and we seemed to be able to think along the same way, same lines. When you take Chewie, take him as a mind character. Easy, relatively easy, because you use your body language and your eyes and your ears. You react to other people in the group. So it was, and I was figured that if, if I did anything wrong, it would, they, someone would tell me, before I really do it again. Never got told that. So, it was pretty cool at the, at the time. Yes, back there. What was it like um, working with the other cast members? Um, who are we talking about? Leah <laughs> or Han or um, Mark? Just all of them, I guess. Oh. Like, how do they treat you? Well, <laughs> when you think that being one of the older members of, of the cast, um, it comes in layers because you've got Harrison, Alec Guinness, myself, or reasonably, were reasonably old. Then you had Mark and Carrie, who were 20s, 24s, and then you had the little, obviously, on the original, you didn't, that was it, sort of, that was a major group. And you all had to coordinate everything, coordinate things with, with what you were doing, what the script was. And we usually worked out, out pretty well. And having youngsters on with different sense of humor makes a hell of a difference. You know, you can have a tense situation and you just, you just go with it and have fun, have fun with it. And if you can get George, George Lewis laughing, you cracked it. <laughs> yes, yes, sir. Yes, I was curious. The uh, it had to be pretty rough wearing that suit, especially on the uh, the, the amount of time you had to spend in it. How did they uh, keep you? Uh, How did they keep them cool? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
Originally, there was no cooling system. <laughs> but uh, it was only on Empire that uh, that we were actually given a suit, uh, a cooling suit underneath it. But you could, because it was a knitted suit, you could sit there, or you could have it undone when they when they were when they were not shooting and. You'd be cool. You'd be cool enough. It was just when they put everything back on, it felt like closing an oven door. <laughs> it got warm. So numerous, of, numerous bottles of water were consumed, which you know made us. You've got to replace big ones, otherwise you you pass out. So, which happened on one occasion. And over there. Well, which film did you have the most fun shooting and which was the most enjoyable to be a part of? Fun shooting? Um, I think Kemper was part of the fun shoot um, because everybody knew what was going on and they knew what the, um, what the relationship was between. It's like an old school reunion, going after or um, a college reunion, because everybody knew what the what the families were and what the situations were. Um, we just enjoyed it and did it. Um, the other, you know, the worst one I think possibly would be Norway. We're on off when we're out in the middle of an ice flow, uh, uh, an ice, ice planet with nothing else around it for about 15 miles. Mind you, around here, it probably is like walking down the high street. But, uh, <laughs> um, you know, it happened. You know, that was the worst one where everything that you needed out on set. These sets are eight, ten miles away from any civilization because they wanted the virgin snow and everything else. So you had to have everything that you needed from a little screw to a big bolt or you know parts and stuff. You couldn't you couldn't rely on you always had to have two of everything so that no time was wasted because it was very, very expensive and very cold. Okay. And over there. Hi, Peter. Hi. I was just wondering, uh, what do you think about the new movie? How do you think it's going to hold up to the original trilogy? It will be good. <laughs> end, end of story, end of question. <laughs> <laughs> All right, any other questions? Way in the back, Nova, could you get that way in the we back? We got one here, Michael. Oh, we'll get that in a minute. Go to yours. Go ahead. Hi, Peter. First of all, thanks for being a part of a film series that we all have grown up with, we all love and, and adore, and you're just one of the characters that are just made this film fantastic. Uh, I'm wondering what your thoughts are on the special editions of the films. <laughs> You'll be, you don't mean the special edition, you mean the holiday, the special edition. No, the holiday special edition. that too, but then. Uh, as long as everything, you know, it came, that uh, holiday special came out of the blue. Someone present said, oh, we want to do a holiday special with Jewish family. It always had been on the books, to speak, that there was going to be a family of witches. The only reason that they fought in the Ewoks, in Jedi, was because they couldn't find enough people. By the big, or basketball players and stuff like this, to make sure that there was a Wookiee village. They had to use little people, and they only just got enough of those to be able to do that particular scene in your know, part in Jeddah. So, but everything else, you know, it pays the bills. 
In the back? Um, are you, um, friends with the person who played Han Solo? That would be Harrison Ford. Right? Yeah. <laughs> He's a friend of mine. I saw him about a month, six weeks ago, so next question. <laughs> Hi, my name's Steven. I just wanted to know, when you guys were filming on the first movie, did you ever think that it would be as big as it is now? No, it was simple, simple thing. There were two, two schools, one that enjoyed it, and one that said it was a load of rubbish. Fortunately, I was more or less down the middle. I had to be because, you know, knowing that that particular character was a possible two, two films extra. So I had to say it was good. Uh, and I still believe it. It's one of the, well, time has proved that he lives. What other movies of any sort, whether they be Star Wars, Star Trek, blah, 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 have lasted this long. And they still got the age group. Look around you. The age group is there. And you can't do you can't do something good uh, with that standard over a short period of time. It's got to be over a longer period of time. Otherwise, why is the, what's the point in doing it for one generation? You've got so much invested in it. It needs, you need time to get things from the first film to balance the second film and to go on hopefully to the third. And that's what happens. Yes, yeah, back there. Speaking of age group. So, how did you get the Millennium Falcon to make the sounds and the steam when the hyperdrive was supposed to be malfunctioning? And how did you get it to get the stuff out of the back of the star? Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, first question. The, the Falcon was very similar to Chewie's voice. It was done in machines and used, they used all sorts of sound for it. Um, you know, jet engines, all, all various other kinds of stuff that were, you wouldn't even, you couldn't even manufacture it. They were na na nature stuff, natural sounds. Um, and as, the, as to the other one, how I got it stuff, I don't know. I wasn't driving it, I was driving it. <laughs> <laughs> Over here. Um, what was your costume made of and how long did it take you to get ready? Um, the costume was a combination of yak hair for the undersuit with, uh, sorry, mohair hair with yak hair underneath that, uh, sewn through that. So you've got a yak hair that's like that. And so uh, the long lengths of the yak hair through that and let it let it cut and let it lie naturally. Uh, regarding um, regarding time, 15, 20 minutes maximum, because you know you, there's only so much sweat in your body. Get <laughs> out, and, and it needs. Uh, replacing so and when you think about it that amount of time is a hell of a lot of footage on movies so even if you even if you're chopping and changing camera angles lights and stuff you can do it pretty quickly so up to a point you you, you go okay how long are you going to be Five minutes, no problem. Get, get it done, go back and do it again. I'd rather, 
I'd rather spend an extra five or ten minutes or two <coughs> than have to go back and do it again on another on another occasion. So, yeah. Okay, and over here we'll do a few more questions. What did it? What has it been like working with J.J. Abrams on Episode Seven versus George Lucas with the previous six films? Um, it was a difference, <laughs> but they are very very. So you can, all I can say is that I enjoyed working with both, and I hear they're pretty good friends. So that's my comment, and I ain't going to say no more. <laughs> over here. Uh, with the concept art leak, is there any truth to Chewie having a cybernetic arm? <laughs> 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 Back there. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayhew. I just want to uh, let you know that uh, I appreciate all the hours and weeks in which you spent in that suit for our enjoyment, and that it was your character that actually got me to see the movie uh, when I was eight years old. I remember being coming home from school one day, and there was a trailer playing, and I went to the kitchen and said, I've got to go see that movie when the Bigfoot flies the spaceship. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Back there. Back there. Excellent. How was it to be Chewbacca? Like, how did you feel about it? In what? In what respect? As a character? Or yeah, as a character. It was a character that could be played. In, you know, it could, think about it. If you had the guy that uh, Dave Dave Browse that played Vader. He was offered the uh, role of Chewie. You just imagine the difference that would make. <laughs> the character would be totally different because he's bigger or in various places. And he just wouldn't have been able to do the things that I probably could do. So each actor has to establish what he wants out of a character goes ahead and does it. So that's, you know, that's the answer. Okay, we'll do two more questions. Three more. Hi, my name is Stephanie. Um, I was wondering if Mr. Lucas gave you the creative freedom to kind of make Chewie's character and his personality, or did he have a really strict uh, it was, personality for him? It was very loosely, you know, we did discuss it about what we could do with that particular character. Did you find your personality kind of morphing as the movies went on? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. It, it it started to come out, you know, literally on the first couple of days shooting, um, and Chewie just just evolved because I walked I walked in a normal uh, semi normal manner but it's very distinct so it was a question of having that a way of uh, having a, an agreement with George that whatever Chewie does is usually if I want to put stuff into it I can do it so we Thank it's, very, you. it's very nice okay two more Hello, um, my name is Robert, and I just wanted to ask, uh, how did Chewbacca's like, language come about, like his iconic speech? Um, that I'm not certain of. I know that there is a language. What it is, I couldn't tell you. You'd have to ask some of the true fans of other first and stuff like that. that actually. Take it apart and uh, deal with it. I don't, I don't know. Uh, to me, it's just an, a, a lot of noises that everybody else understands. <laughs> Excellent. And uh, we have one more. Time for one more. Where did? Where are you at, Nova? Microscope. Microphone. Oh, 
Hello? Okay, there you are. Go ahead. Go ahead. Hey. Uh, my, my question is, uh, do you feel J.J. Abrams was the best choice for directing the new Star Wars movie? Um, that I can't comment on because I don't know who was, who was other, who the other directors were for consideration. And so, do you feel that the new Star Wars movie will fit into the saga? Is up to you guys. I'm saying nothing. <laughs> All right. We'll do one more question. We're not going to end with that. Let's do one more. No, let's do the fun. One more question. I believe someone over there. You don't want to end with a cliffhanger. <laughs> How did you feel about Lando Calrissian not being in number seven? <laughs> you heard something yet? <laughs> you heard something yet? I don't know. I don't know. Let's get another one. Let's make a good last a good last question. Uh, um, right there in the back. Give it up. Yeah, right there. Anyone? Just <laughs> something to get too close. Make it a good one. Good last question. This will, I hope this is worth the walk. <laughs> there we go. Hello, and uh, thank you for being here. My question is, you know, your life's been a really amazing journey, but if there was one piece of wisdom or a proverb or a little kernel of truth you tell a younger you, what would you tell yourself? Thank you very much. Uh, That's a good last question. <laughs> <laughs> what would I tell myself? Don't do it. <laughs> Looking at what I've done in the past, it's like going down a corridor and having two doors. Two doors, one, one says success, one says failure. What can, which one are you going to? And you can't, you can't read what's on those doors. How do, you make, how, how do you make a decision? You don't. You open one door and hope for the best. What is going on, and um, I think the opportunity comes, and I have taken a lot of uh, opportunities, things that uh, I thought is right, and look, look what we are. <coughs> 200 people all here together, 30 years later. <laughs> Success. I think. Thank you very much. Thank you.